Welcome to the last module of an intuitive introduction to probability, decision-making in an uncertain world. This last module covers the normal distribution, perhaps the most famous and most important probability distribution in everyday applications. However, before we can really talk about the normal distribution and the famous bell curve, we have to talk about the concept of a continuous random variable and a continuous probability distribution. And that's what this first lecture of this module is all about. Let's dive right straight in with a definition. A continuous random variable x can take on a continuum of possible values. Some people would say an uncountably infinite number of values. For example, many variables in everyday life are not discrete. They don't jump from value to value, like if you roll a fair die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or in a casino at a roulette table, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Instead, they take on continuous values. Here I have some examples. A time to finish a task, or the length, if I produce a, an item, the length of the item, the thickness, the width. Now you may say, wait a minute, but time I count in hours, in minutes, in seconds. Yeah, but wait a minute, this is only our human limitation in measuring time. We can think then of hundreds of a seconds, thousands of a seconds, microseconds, nanoseconds. Time doesn't jump, time goes continuously. If we think of it as discrete, it's only because our limitation of measurements. So, continuous variables do exist. In addition, believe it or not, sometimes it's easier to think of a variable as being continuous than in, instead of having it discrete values. Stock prices are certainly discrete. We go in cents or here in Switzerland in Rappen. Nevertheless, it's sometimes easier to model these random processes with a continuous random variable. So, Continuous. That's really a tricky concept. And now I want to spend the rest of this lecture of thinking what is continuous variable? What does this really mean? So let's think of a random variable that can take on any real number between 0 and 1. And then I can ask the question, and let's start with a little in-class question. What is the probability that this random variable will take on exactly the number 0.12345678. Think about this. What is this probability? Before I give you the answer to this in-class question, I want you to have a look at a little spreadsheet that I prepared. Because Excel has this beautiful random variable function, RAND, that allows us to simulate the random variable on 0, 1. Let's do that. So, here now I prepared a little spreadsheet uh, for you using the random number function in Excel. Here, in every version of Excel, you have this beautiful function rand, parentheses open, parentheses closed. This particular function gives you a random number between 0 and 1. And so, now look at these numbers. They are all different. Now, what do you think is a chance I get a 0 0.12345678. Let me try this again. We have these random numbers. I click enter. We get 10 new numbers. Look at this. They change all the time. However, if you want to bet on a particular number, this is hopeless. If you think there's any chance 0 0.5, 0 0.55, or from the in-class quiz question, 0.12345678 shows up, it's not going to happen. Probability is zero. As a little aside, for the techies among you, here in Excel, of course, these are not truly random numbers. They are limitations to the computer. They are only so-called pseudo-random numbers. And I only get a limited number of digits here. So technically we only have finitely many numbers. However, this is meant as a representation of the true continuum. And in that sense, the probability of every number is zero and we cannot hit any number that I give you ahead of time. So let's now wrap this up this idea, move back to the spreadsheet to the slides 
and continue with continuous random variables. There's really an infinite number of numbers between 0 and 1, and we cannot count them. If you think you can count them, give me the number that comes after 0. If you say, oh, it's 0 0.001, I say no, there's another number that comes first, 0 0.00001. And even there are many numbers, infinitely many, that come before that. Similarly, you can't give me the next number after 0.5 or give me the last number before 0.5. So we see this continu continuum doesn't allow us to give positive probabilities because there are so many numbers that the total sum of probabilities in the end would be larger than 1. And we know that cannot be. Think back to the axioms we had way back in the, the beginning of the course. So the probability of every individual number must be zero. So, or said differently, no individual number can have a positive probability. This is so key that I made a little theorem out of it here. Every continuous random variable in the universe has a property that the probability of this random variable taking on a value x is zero. So we can no longer talk about individual probabilities. That's just nonsensical. So what can we still do at this point? Let's think about another in-class question here. What is the probability that this random variable that I showed you in the Excel sheet comes up with a number between zero and a quarter? Think about that. So, between zero and a quarter, there are also infinitely many numbers. And if you play with the random number uh, sheet, with those random numbers I showed you, you will notice that in 25% of all cases, you get a number between zero and a quarter. Similarly, between a quarter and a half, 25% of the time, you fall into that interval. And a quarter of all numbers are between 0.5 and 0.75, and similarly 0.75 to 1. This looks awfully uniform. And that's the name of this particular distribution that we, are, we simulated in the Excel spreadsheet. It's a uniform distribution on the interval 0, 1. And there's nothing special on having the width of the interval a quarter. Here, I show you intervals of the length of 0.1 between 0 and 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0.2, all the way to 0.9 and 1. They all show up with 10% probability. And there's nothing special that they're all sitting next to each other. If you think about how likely is it to get a number between 0 0.18 and 0 0.28, that probability is also 0 0.1. So we have a uniform distribution here and it doesn't make sense to talk about probabilities of points, but as soon as we have a little range within our larger range, we can talk about positive probabilities. How can we represent them? And this is now the big change from discrete random variables to continuous random variables. In discrete random variables, we have single numbers and they have probabilities. We can't do that here. Here, we represent probabilities through areas underneath a curve. Let's look here at this illustration. Any number between zero and one is possible. It has probability zero, but we get a number between 0 and 1. We don't get negative numbers. We don't get numbers larger than 1. Now, look at this rectangle here. A square, we have the whole area is really 1. It has a width of 1. It has a height of 1. So the whole area is 1 times 1. Now, here we look at the probability between 0 0.18 and 0 0.28. This has a width of 1 and a height of, uh, sorry, a width of 0 0.1 and a height of 1. So this has an area of 0.1. Within the whole area, 
of one. So this is now 10% of the whole area. And this is how this green rectangle within the larger box represents a probability. And this is how we do it in general. As a quick aside, for those of you who remember integration from high school, there we also look at areas underneath the curve, those are integrals. And if we look at an integral from a point A to another, to the same point A, that integral for any function was always equal to zero. So here, the representation of probabilities underneath curves corresponds to what you learned in high school about integration. That's just as an aside for those of you who know this. Now, this function that we need this to describe the curve is called a probability density function, or PDF for short. It has the following properties. This function needs to be greater or equal zero for all elements. We cannot have negative elements. It's either equal to zero or positive. The entire area underneath the curve has to be one. Why? Think back to the very beginning, the basic rules of probability, the probability of the sample space, everything that's possible, always must be one. The same thing is true here. That's now in technical terms. It means the integral of the entire area has to be equal one. That's for the techies among you. You can just think of it that the total area under the graph of this curve is equal to one. Now, since it doesn't make sense to talk about individual probabilities, the only probabilities we can talk about is for areas for larger ranges and therefore for continuous random variables the key function is the cumulative dense uh, distribution function the cdf typically denoted by a capital f and that allows us to then talk about probabilities and then i can use this function now to also calculate the probabilities for fixed ranges the probability over an interval, as I showed you in the earlier examples. There now, the probability that a continuous random variable falls between a lower number a and a larger number b is then just the difference of the cumulative distribution at b and minus the cumulative distribution at a. And so here I show you the technical calculation that goes along with this very intuitive picture. Finally, you can also draw the cumulative distribution function, which I did in, on this graph for you. Um, and so the cumulative distribution function starts out at zero, moves up to one, and then stays one forever. I, in my experience, students appreciate this function less. They prefer graphs underneath the density function. So for the remainder of this course, I will also focus on that areas underneath the density. So, to wrap up this very long but very important lectures, when we talk about the normal distribution, we need to get a good feel for continuity, what it means for a distribution to be continuous. Therefore, we briefly talked about continuous random variables and then looked at this most uh, simple continuous distribution, uh, namely the uniform on zero, one. And the key takeaway that I need for you to understand is a representation of probabilities as areas underneath a curve. That's a key concept which we will need to calculate probabilities for some cool applications as we go forward. So, please come back for more lectures in the next lecture, we start with the normal distribution and then you will see continuous distributions in action. Thanks and see you soon.